welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And after Fist of Mabel yesterday, we return to another absolute master of the Sudoku world today with a puzzle from Art van der Weetering, the Dutch Sudoku constructor behind, well, probably the most famous Sudoku puzzle of all time. Um, the puzzle on the screen is called High Temperatures, by the way, and it is a normal thermo Sudoku. How often do we get to say that nowadays? Very, very rarely. Um, so really, really simple rules, which I'll go through in a moment, for those of you who have not seen thermo Sudoku before. But two of our testers have looked at this, and they are raving about it. They, they basically said it's just one of the most elegant Sudokus they've ever seen. And it's apparently extremely approachable. Uh, one of them said it was only just harder than a gas puzzle, so a genuinely approachable Sudoku. So it might be, if I can do it, you know, efficiently, it might be quite a short video today. Um, but we'll, we'll get to this in a moment or two. But um, yeah, our, our, our puzzles are always something of a delight. Um, how, do I, how do I think about Ard? What he manages to do is he takes, he takes something and can present a clever idea with simplicity. And that's a really, really, it's sort of a brilliant thing to be able to do. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get to this in a moment or two. I've got some things to tell you about first. Oh, yes, the first thing I'm going to tell you about is a new book that I've been sent. This is by Akash Dulani, World of Sudoku, Volume 8. I hope you can see it. Akash has been making a whole series of these books. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link under under the video if anyone's interested in in buying it. Why do I like it? Well, I like them because they're they're handcrafted puzzles, so that automatically gets a tick in my book. Um, the other reason I like Akash's books is that he he normally gets a very very good fast solver to solve all the puzzles in the book, and said fast solver re records all their times. So there's a little bit of competition. I think it is Edward Lebeau has done has done the solving times for this one. Um, so, you know, if you fancy yourself as a bit of a speed demon, you can try and do, you know, the puzzle on page 42 in better than 5 minutes 35 seconds. And if you do, you can feel quite proud of that. And the other thing that I see Akash has just implemented in this book is um, online solving links. So if you prefer to solve now on computer rather than uh, pencil and paper, you can now do that. I think that I think the links are to Penpa, the Penpa software. For those of you who are familiar with that so akash's new book is out now i think i think mark might, might be attempting a puzzle from that book in this evening's video i hope i haven't got that wrong but i think that's what's going on um now next thing i want to talk about is some very special birthdays i'm going to start with a little girl called lana who has turned 11 today lana many many happy returns now i know from your dad jamie that you you like system of L puzzles. So I hope you I hope you had a look at yesterday's video and tall cat puzzles. Well, I hope you can agree that Ard, Ard is a good stand in for those two. I'm sorry we're not doing one of your favorite constructors today, but I hope, of course, you can. I hope all the chocolate cake makes up for that. Um, Emmy, Emmy, you've turned 23 today. And I know this because your boyfriend, Michael, wrote to us and uh, Michael told us that he introduced Emmy to Sudoku, but she has um, become obsessed by it to the point where she has even made a present presentation about killer Sudoku at her work. So that, Emmy, I fully approve of that. <laughs> that, that makes you, <laughs> that makes you absolutely top notch in my opinion. And Emmy, I hope you have a brilliant birthday. Um, and Kyle has turned 21 today. And Kyle, um, I know, I know, Carl, you suffer a bit with sort of social anxiety. And well, all I'll tell you is that this channel is, is the channel for you. This corner of the Internet is full. Uh, <laughs> it's full of people who are always in the corner at parties, let me tell you. Um, and I don't know if I've got any good advice. Keep keep pushing, keep trying. Uh, and I, I hope and I, I think it will improve over time. And I hope today you're able to have an absolutely brilliant day. Um, and then finally, Ole, who's turned 38 today in Germany. And I know this because your girlfriend Annika wrote to us. Now, Annika was very honest. Um, she admitted that you watch Ole uh, and she falls asleep. Well, 
<laughs> it doesn't completely surprise me. Um, but um, Ollie, I hope you have a brilliant day today, uh, obviously with lots of chocolate cake. Now, what else can I tell you about? Uh, I need to tell you about um, what's going on over on Patreon, where we have released the Jewels of Osiris as the monthly reward for May. This is a Sudoku hunt, but I'm not sure that's really doing it justice uh, by Demono because it's the Sudoku hunt in the form of a novel. And I absolutely love the idea. And it turns out so do a lot of you. So the idea is that you, you really start to read the, read the novel, you get interested in the story, and then you're presented with a Sudoku puzzle. And you have to be able to solve the puzzle and extract the code from that if you want to read more of the story. And the, the clever thing about this is Demono has written a story that actually people want to get to the end of, and that makes them very determined to solve the Sudokus. <laughs> so it's absolutely, it, it, it is, it's original, interesting, uh, exactly the sort of things that we hope to, hope to have on the channel. Um, and lots of the uh, well, lots of the feedback is basically saying it's the favorite, it's your favorite, your most favorite thing we've ever published on, on Patreon. And that is absolutely brilliant to hear. Um, and if you do get stuck, do remember over on the Discord server, there's a patron only channel where you might be able to find some hints and tips. Um, but the other thing I want to do is to read out some names of correct solvers of last month's monthly reward, which was the nightmare on Sudoku Street. I think I'm going to finish reading the names for this one tomorrow, but these people solved all of the puzzles. So well done to Alex Kilbourne. Um, Alex, I don't know why I didn't pick up your, your solution earlier. I think it's because you sent the answer in a different color. And when I searched using on Gmail for, for what I was looking for, it didn't, it doesn't show your email and, and that might be why. But anyway, Alex, Alex Kilborn, very well done. You, you actually solved all 19 puzzles earlier than I'm giving you credit for here. Um, Gareth Thomas, Simon Dixie, Erish Peterson. Now, Erish, I was delighted to hear that your seven and 10 year old daughters are enjoying Sudoku and logic puzzles. And I'll let you in on a secret. We've got another kids Sudoku hunt coming up later in May. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Paul Wallace, Jack Farnsworth, Esmeralda klein Resink, and Anne-Marie Dehaan, Zopar, Jakob Markgren, Ignacio Cascudo, Car Carolyn Offert, Carlo Pagnogak, Carlo Pagnogak, I think. I might be getting the pronunciation of that wrong. Uh, Solvig Sigurdart Oh, this this is this beautiful name. I love this name, but I can never say it. Solvig Sigurdardottir. Sigurdardottir. It's something like that. I might be, I'm probably getting that wrong. But to me, it sort of, it feels like a beautiful Tolkien name. Um, and I wish I could do it justice. Len Sorensen, Clayton Newman, Sarah Wittenberger, Wittenberger, I think. No, it's not. It's Wattenberger. Sarah Vatten, Sarah Wattenbarger. <laughs> you, you have to help me. I may be okay at solving so Sudoku, but reading names is completely beyond me. Uh, and Jose Antonio, all of you are brilliant solvers, and you've made a complete mockery of my ability to read. Um, anyway, with that said and done, let's have a look at high temperatures by Ard van der Vatering, and these are the very simple rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so that means the digits 1 to 9 in each row, in each column, and in each 3x3 three three box, once each. Digits on thermometers increase from the bulb end. So, um, actually I'm not going to do the central row because I can see something interesting about that. Let's do this one. Let's imagine this square's a 2. If this square's a 2, then we've got to increase from the bulb end. So that could be a 4, and that could be a 6, and this could be a 7, and that could be an 8. Wah! No, that's, that would work because as we go up the thermometer, as mercury would rise as the temperature increases, so must our digits rise as we move forward. That's how the puzzles work. I just see my clock isn't starting. Hang on. That's right, my clock's going. All is good in the world. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking and I'm going to start actually. Well, let's start with the central Let's start with the central row, although 
Although, I've just had another thought. Okay, I'm going to actually start with a different thought. I can see how to put a digit. I can actually see how to put two digits in a puzzle. But I'm going to start with something different that I'm noticing about the syzygy of planets that we've got oscillating down column five. Yeah, OK, I am going to start with this because that is a one, two, three, four, five quintuple, I reckon. I was just thinking this as I was doing the example there. Whatever digit you put into one of these circles, they've got to they've got to be at least four digits higher than that. It um, available because if if we made this a six, which is the sh this is the shortest term, though it's the same as this one. But if this was a six, I could go seven eight on one side, but I need to go nine ten on the other side because there must be four digits higher than the, the digit we put in the bulb. And that is the case for each of these planets that we've got down column five. And because, because in every case we're looking for at least four digits higher, the, therefore the maximum digit I could put into any one of these circles is five. So this is a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. In fact, I am going to take advantage of that and do, go full pencil mark. That's a six, seven, eight, nine into the gaps. I don't know if that actually helps, but it, is, it just struck me as quite interesting. Um, all right, now I'm going to return to the first thought I had, which is, which is to do with the secret along thermometers. And the secret along thermometers is to think about ones and nines. So where can you put a one on a thermometer? And the answer to that is in the bulb of a thermo, because if you try and put it partially up a thermometer, this digit needs to be lower than a one, and there are no Sudoku digits lower than one. So, in this row, we can only put one in the bulb, and that's going to affect our syzygy, isn't it? Now, the other thought that I had about this row is nine. Where's nine going on a thermometer? Well, nine can only ever go in the tip of a thermometer. And there are two tips available in row five, but one of them can't be a nine because there's a nine in its box. So, unless I'm mistaken, this is a nine. And... OK, that's not a nine, is it? So there's a nine in one of these three cells by Sudoku. Um, now, what next? OK, <laughs> I think we just carry on with the secret. Keep using the secret. Where does one go in row seven? It can't go on a thermometer unless it's in the bulb, and that can't be a one. So that's a one. Where does one go in row three? Well, it can't go on a thermometer unless it's in the bulb, so it's got to go here now. Yeah, this is lovely. This is really... OK. All right, this is just classic art. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Now I can just ask, keep asking this question. Where does one go in row two? Now, it can't go in these squares by Sudoku. It can't go on a thermometer because it can't go in the bulb. And it can't go there by Sudoku. So it goes there. It goes there by Sudoku. One of these two squares, one of these two squares. And I'm going to look at this row because we know it can't go on the thermometer. All those squares or that square. That feels very, that felt very symmetrical to what we did up here. Um, right. So we get left with a, an X-wing of ones, and it feels like we've got seven ones in the grid <laughs> straight away. So now, do we look at nines or twos? That one of those is what we're going to look at next. Oh, yeah, OK. I've spotted one thing. Um, OK, let me, well, let's, let's ask the simple question. Where, what is this digit? Well, it's the lowest digit that's left that's not one or four, so it's two. <laughs> if, if we try and put two anywhere partially up this thermometer, this digit would have to be a one, which it doesn't seem to be able to be. Now that look affects our syzygy, which... Okay, so now I think what we do is we say, what's, where's three in this row? 
And the answer to that is I don't know, but it's definitely next to the 2 in one on one side of it or the other. So this square is not a 3. So this is now 4 or 5. Um, now, okay, this might be where we get completely... Oh, okay, no, this, this is great again, actually. Where does, okay, where does 2 go in row 3? Well, this thermometer now is it has a minimum size digit here of three, so two can't go on the thermometer, so two goes in the end. And the same, as look, look in row two, where does two go? It can't go on the thermo, it can't go in these squares, so it goes in one of those two positions. Two, ah, okay, two in this box, where does it go? Well. It's more where two goes in row five. It, it can't. It can't go along the thermo anywhere other than next to the one. And that means two in box four goes in one of those squares. Two in box seven goes in one of those squares. It definitely can't go on a thermometer that begins with a four or five. So two goes here. So two again. Two goes here. Two goes here. 2 can't go there because it would it would clash with the 2 on the thermos. 2 goes here, 2 goes here. Have we got... Mm, we've got 7 2s. Okay, we haven't got... Oh, I see. Look, 2, two in box 2 is, is in the same cells as the, as the pencil mark for 1. So where we get this pattern going on, where we know the 1s are in one of those two positions and the 2s are in one of those two positions, we can replace that with central pencil marking because this must be a 1-2 pair now. Okay. Where does... Where does <laughs> this is so clever. Where does 3 go in row, row 3? Well, it can't go anywhere but in the bulb now. So we have to keep keeping an eye on on these rows when once we sort of complete the cells in rows that are not on the thermo we can always write in the nature of the bulb now look this square now is not a three so but yeah oh this is a five yeah because now look at this row where does the four go and the answer is in one of those two positions because if we try and put it further away we'd have to put three and a half on the thermo that means this is a five because it can't be a four which means this is a 4 because it can't be a 5. So our quintuple now has been finished. 4 is in one of those two cells by Sudoku. 3 in this row can't go on the thermo, so 3 is in one of those two cells. Um, oh, come on, don't get stuck. Right, I'm not going to get stuck because this 5 is big, isn't it? This, this we worked out was sort of the most extreme digit we could have in a bulb. So we now know that these squares are a 6, 7, 8, 9 quadruple and we can improve upon that because we can't put 6. We can't put 6 in the extreme and we can't put 9 in the middle. So these two squares, that's not a 2, is it? These two squares on the wings of row 2 are not a dove they are a three four pair and there's a four here so this is three this is four this is four by sudoku this is four by sudoku so what's that digit two or three by thermo um okay uh no i thought i was about to say something intelligent and it turned out that my brain my brain had let me down um Five. I was just thinking about where five goes in this row because it can't go in these squares. Right, okay, so five we know is in one of those two cells. That's forced because Oh yeah, this right, this thermo's got something weird going on with it. Right, let's let's actually study this for a moment. Um Yeah. Okay, so we've worked out that five must five has to appear in row three somewhere, and it can't be in these two squares by Sudoku. Now, if we were to put it at the end of a thermo, 
we could put four in one cell, but then we would have no option. So five has to be in one of these two squares. And one side of this three is a four, five pair. It's either this way or this way, but we don't know which. But we can do better than this, because look at this row. And six is in one of these two squares. Now that means I can apply that logic again, can't I? In fact, that's not a six I'm noticing as well. But and what I mean by I can apply that logic again is I've got to put six somewhere in row three. Now, wherever I put it, it's got to have, and we can see that it's not in these two squares. I've got to put it somewhere where I can put a lower digit on the thermo that brings me back to my three. So imagine I did this, four, five, and then I tried to put the six on this side. It won't work. There's no digit available for this square. In other words, one side of this three is a four, five, six triple. So there's a six in one of those squares. Ah, six in one of these squares. And it, it's going to go four, five, six, either this side or this side. Oh, I've seen something else. I've seen something else that's, that's distracted me. There's, I think there's quite a lot going on in this one. There's quite a lot going on. Okay. Um, I don't know which side of this is 456, but the corollary of one side of it being 456 is that one side of the three goes 789. And that means that we can effectively pencil mark this thermometer in a pretty way. Um, this isn't what I saw, by the way. This is just, I think... I'm sure this is resolved somehow. I just can't see how to do it. But what I noticed was I can I can place nine in row two because of the given nine. Look, nine gets knocked out of this square. Not only does that knock eight out of this square by thermo logic, where do we put nine in row two? And the answer is in one place only. Ah, I've seen what that does as well. Look, <laughs> this square sees that one. So that's the six, which means that's the five, that's the four. This is the seven, this is the eight, this is the nine. This is a seven, this is a six, this is an eight. Uh, that's a nine. So this is not nine. This is not nine. Um, is this good? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Okay, where do we put nine in this box? And I don't quite know the answer to that, but I can tell you um, nine is definitely not on a thermo unless it's at the tip, and none of those are thermo tips. So nine actually is living in the same cells, look, as the one, as the one down here. So that gives us, it's similar to what we had up there. We got a one, two pair there. We get a one nine pair down here. This is not nine, so this is nine. Oh, right, this is huge. Well, maybe not huge, but certainly interesting. So nine, nine in this box now, we can just place. Effectively, we've got four nines looking at this box and the nine has to go here. And that's displacing a pencil mark for a three. We can't put a three high up on a thermo, <laughs> or certainly not higher up than a four. So three, three goes here, and these two squares are a five, six pair. And these squares look like they're four, seven, and eight. Ah, four, seven, eight. That's not four. Have we got threes in... Oh, no, we're not going to get a three in the corner. I was just thinking, are we going to get threes in the corner today? This three rules out that one. This one rules out that one. And these two don't seem to be able to be threes. No threes in the corner today. Um, three is in one of those two cells in box nine. Uh, five maybe in this row we've we've placed one two three and four so the five must be in one of those two cells on the thermo 
what does that mean for five in this row then? So five can't go in those squares. So five is either, yeah, this is lovely. It's the same, it's the same sort of logic again. Where do we put five in row seven? Now, wherever we put five, we've got to be able to put a lower digit on its thermo. Now, what lower digits are available in this row? Well, we've placed one, two, four, and nine. Sorry, not nine, nine is definitely higher. We've placed one, two, and four. So the only available digit that we could put below the five is a three, which is going to be one of these squares, which means one of these sides is a three, five pair in exactly these two cells. Now this side, you can't put the five, look. So the five has to go there. There may have been a simpler way of doing this, but uh, that's the way I've seen it. Now these squares have got to be six, seven, and eight. And that means this can't be eight and this can't be six. Oh, uh, mm, bobbins. I don't think we can do that. Although what we can do actually is sim is, is simpler. Look, where do we put eight in this box? Well, eight's not down there. Eight could be here and is here actually, because if this was eight, this would be nine and it can't be nine. So the only place for eight in the box is there, which means we get a six, seven pair in the middle, middle column. These squares are five, six and seven now. Can we do better than that? Yes, there's a six, seven pair looking at that one. Ah, it's been a naked single. Okay, so this is a six, seven pair. Five is here. So this square's higher than six or seven, so it's seven or eight. So now I've got a seven, eight pair here, and that, that square up there becomes a four of all things. Um, so this square is six, seven or eight, I suppose. Ah, no, that's not six, seven or eight. There's a seven, eight pair looking at it. So that's become a six, seven, six, eight, seven all go into the grid. That squares an eight by the power of Sudoku. That is not a three in the corner, it's a seven in the corner. And now we can put in th three, five and six again. I don't, yeah, look, it's because of the symmetry of these, of these thermos, because this was three, five, six, although actually the four, one, seven are in a different order. I, I don't know, I, I'm feeling like there's some sort of symmetry underlying this puzzle. This square is not five. This square is three or six, but it's not three. If that's three, what's this square? And the answer is two, but then this square would have no value. If that's three and that's two, that square cannot exist. And that's not a good position to be in. So six and three go into the grid. Five, six pair here is resolved. Six and five go into the grid. Um, this square has got to be higher than six, so it's seven or eight. That gives me a pair in the column. So these two squares are a three, four pair. These squares are five, seven, and eight. Hmm. Okay, oh, I see. Um, see, again, I think I've missed a trick in this row. Where's the, where does the three go? And again, I don't know the, oh, I do, I actually do know the answer to that. But what I've noticed is because this is a four, these are higher digits than four. So two and three in the row are, are a pair in those squares. And in fact, this three means that that's a three, but I think that's been available because this is pointing at a two, three pair for a while. I just hadn't seen it. So one and nine go into the grid. Nine gets placed up here by our old friend, our fair weather friend, Sudoku. This square here is a five. So that means that's a five in column nine. We get a seven, eight here. These two squares are four and eight. I'm sure that's resolved somehow. <laughs> All right, so what's going on in this row? Five, this is the five because it's got to be the next lowest digit. And we've got seven or eight here and this can't be seven. So that's got to be eight, seven, eight, eight, seven. Um, Five, five and six go into the grid, look. So now we can get that digit. That looks like it's seven, which means that's seven, that's six. 
And these two squares are three and six, and that six looks like it's going to do all sorts of wonderment. Look. And we have finished the puzzle. <laughs> That's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. I think I, I maybe didn't take the most efficient path through that, to be honest. I suspect I could have got this two, three pair figured out a bit more quickly. It felt like that when I came across it at the end. And I had a three here looking at this two, three. But what I loved about that, actually, I loved the fact that you could just write in a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. Um, that <laughs> just, I don't know why, that just appeals to me as a little bit of logic that you can immediately start the puzzle with. Um, what I also loved was the fact that we were sort of jumping around like um, Tigger if Pooh had given him too much honey because we could we could, ones twos and nines at the start you could just bounce back and forward between the thermo rows and, and, and sort of write them all in somehow I don't know how R does this there's always sort of very few given digits today we've just got two given digits and yet and yet it permits this this cascading logic that is incredibly um joyous to solve it really is it's an absolute it's a gift art it really is loved it again let me know in the comments how you got on i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic